I don't know who's been playing around with the timeline, but somehow it has finally happened. We are getting Wicross in English. So for anyone looking to give this game a try, I'll go over the first two starter decks that will be released in early November, as well as any other information we have about the English release. Wicross is starting their release at the start of the D.Va format, which means for now we're barely a year behind the Japanese game. The first starter deck is Ancient Surprise, featuring At as the center of the rig, and Umaru and Tawil as the assist the rigs. This is a nice, nostalgic deck, since not only are Umar and Tawil the rigs that have been around since almost the beginning of the game, but many of the Signi reference older Signi as well, like Klet and Lancelot. Even the name is a throwback to a powerful art that dominated early Wacross. Unlike previous Wacross starters, which almost always centered on just one color, Diva decks are multicolored, featuring as many as three colors. Centered on At, the Ancient Surprise deck is mostly green, but with red and blue splashes to give the deck a good diversity of effects. More than any other starter, this deck feels like a toolbox. Uh, you have card draw, banishing, defense, and energy charging, with sprinklings of power boosting, card selection, and hand disruption. More importantly, this deck does a good job putting these effects where you need them, when you need them. It has plenty of card draw early to make sure you can fill in your defenses, and then it has powerful offense and defense options once you get to the late game. It also generates enough enter and draws enough cards that you're rarely struggling to put your strong turns together. Over on the other side of the field, the second pre-constructed deck to be released in this first wave is the Niji Sanji Collaboration deck. Niji Sanji are a group of VTubers and both the deck Signy and Lurig all feature prominent VTubers from within the Niji Sanji group. Your center Lurig is Lisa Halesta, and your assist Lurigs are Anja Katrina and Inui Toko. Lisa in the center and Anja on the assist are both white, leaving Toko to provide just a small hint of black to the deck. The deck has plenty of removal, and a bunch of it doesn't even give the opponent enter, which makes it stronger than usual. And it also has a ton of ways to add more cards to your hand and a strong Servant Recursion engine in Otogibara era. Unfortunately, the deck also has no defensive effects to speak of outside of discarding servants. The English release will also omit the extra center and assist Lurigs included in the Japanese release that allowed you to freely choose any of the Lurigs to be your center. In terms of their power levels, the decks are not the best matched. The Ancient Surprise deck is overall very competent and gives the player a good variety of effects and the resources to use them. The Niji Sanji deck, meanwhile, not only is badly lacking in the defense department, but it struggles to generate enough enter to use all of its effects. Further, while Era is a powerhouse, the rest of the main deck is kind of lackluster. It does come with a bit of an asterisk though, since we don't know the exact contents of the English editions of these decks, although we can assume. We already know that the Niji Sanji deck has been changed from its Japanese configuration by removing the additional center of the rigs, but I wouldn't be surprised if other things changed slightly as well. Particularly, the centerpiece of the main deck in the Niji Sanji deck is Otogibara Era, who is a VTuber who has since retired from streaming. So for anyone buying these decks to play them at their stock lists, I can give a bit of general advice. Ancient Surprise is fairly straightforward. You use your effects as you have the enter available to use them, prioritizing your Lurig effects. Not only are they more powerful, but getting your assists to level 2 is very useful since it increases your limit, allowing you to create a more powerful field, and this deck does have plenty of powerful options you would like to see in play. If a servant ends up in your enter zone, uh, either by enter charging or by being taken out of your life cloth, try to leave it there as much as possible over any of the other cards since the spell Polygenesis can bring one card back from your Ender Zone to your hand, and a Servant is going to be the best option in most cases. Although Polygenesis is still a very useful, uh, versatile spell that can do a lot of other things as well. For Niji Sanji, uh, you need to be a bit more disciplined in your gameplay. The first thing to note is that while your Lurig deck lacks any defense, it has a solid amount of offensive power. To make use of this, you're going to want to fire off the effects as soon as possible. It's especially easy to forget to use one of your level 2 assist rigs at level 2, which is usually a mistake. You only have 3 signy lanes to attack with each turn, and without defense, you need to maximize the damage you're pushing through in each and every one of your turns. Next up, the deck has a ton of effects that you should just completely ignore. Morinaka Kazaki has a decent effect, but you'll never have the spare enter to use it in this deck. The spell Wonderland is the same, except it's not attached to a Signy, so it's even worse. In most games, 
The best play I make with this card is discarding it to hand size. Shizuka Rin is a vanilla. Yes, she has text, but none of it does anything the deck cares about. In fact, about the only card in the main deck worth even considering spending Enner on is Otogibara Era, and even then, you're usually better off channeling your Enner into your Larig deck. Fortunately, the Larig deck is quite powerful. So these decks are a bit unbalanced out of the box, uh, favoring Ancient Surprise over Niji Sanji, but how do they work as starter decks? How do they work as a base to build around? One of the great things about lacrosse starter decks is that they have plenty of cards that can make it into a more tuned competitive list, uh, like Servants and many of the lower level Larigs. Of course, they also have plenty of cards that can be swapped out for more powerful options. In Ancient Surprise, at level 3 center Larig can be a bit plain if you aren't leaning into the 15,000 or more power sub-theme, but the assists cover a variety of roles quite well, and the signy of different classes sub-theme also gives you a ton of freedom in which direction to take the deck. You can lean into the 15,000 power theme, or rebuild the deck around a completely different theme, like the spell-based decks that will start cropping up in the next set. Given the assist rigs available, though, the one thing the deck is generally not going to be well suited for is aggressive strategies. Niji Sanji, on the other hand, has more flexibility in its Lorig deck configuration. It can work either as a more black-focused aggressive deck, or a slower, more white-focused defensive deck. However, its main deck is a lot less versatile. Niji Sanji are centered around Virtual Signy, which as a Signy tribe are very insular. Virtual cards are all built to interact with other virtual cards, meaning the ability to splash in new effects is a lot smaller. An example you'll see come up in this game is Lisa's level 3 Larig effect. She looks at the top 3 cards of your deck and adds all Virtual Signy revealed this way to your hand, and you trash the rest. It can be as much as a full-on draw 3 in the right deck, but that deck is going to be almost exclusively Virtual Signy. For the first expansion, this difference in scope isn't too much of a problem since there's plenty of Virtual Signy in the set, but none of the next 5 sets released in Japan for the D.Va format so far have had any further Virtual Signy in them. I'm not an expert on the D.Va metagame, so maybe Niji Sanji has managed to stay competitive, and since I gather these collaborations do quite well for Across, I'd expect more Virtual Signy at some point down the road, but for the next few sets worth of releases, Ancient Surprise is going to be a lot easier of a base to build off of. As for this deck, the Niji Sanji deck is falling a bit behind as usual. Not only are they having the usual problems with Enter and defensive effects, but they've been pretty unlucky with drawing Servants, and the Ancient Surprise deck got some luck on their side with some really solid life bursts that saved them a few extra points of damage there. Hopefully this hasn't scared you off of the first wave of decks too much, uh, since the game is still quite a lot of fun, and even one booster box is going to go a long way towards putting these decks on more even footing. And if you're still not loving the looks of these decks, the next set should have an additional 4 decks to choose from. As far as pricing on these decks, from what's come up so far, it looks like they will each sell for $12 US, and the boxes will be a bit north of $50 US for 20 boosters, which is all pretty reasonable for a cross, and is a pretty good rate for a TCG in general. Hopefully this release goes well, and we can continue to enjoy Lacrosse in English for a long time to come. If there is any specific lacrosse content at all that you would like to see, apart from meta-analysis since I know very little about the current meta in Japan, uh, let me know in the comments. And until the next time, have a great day and I will see you in the next video.